Liverpool. Leeds Rhinos are defending their crown. And what a moment for Halifax Rugby League. Oh, oh. Austin is through and Warrington dominating. Ta-da! Great try for the Robins. And as the Giants take the points home. And this it is a full lad. Now then, there's just four left in the Betfred Super League. We're going to count down to the two semi-finals this week with two men who've won the grand final, Adrian Morley and Paul Schoolthorpe. Gents, thanks for coming in. Scully, first of all, the two outsiders won this last week. Yeah, wasn't there, uh, wasn't there some shocks this week? Um, you know, Hull KR, what a, what a performance against, uh, against, against Warrington. Um, fabulous, you know, performance. And, uh, and obviously Leeds... Turning over Wigan, you know, Wigan coming off the back of a, a good win against Catalan Dragons. I thought, you know, they seem to show that bit of resilience towards the back end of the year, usually what we see from that Wigan side, but, you know, it's been a, been a poor season from them. Former Warrington captain, Hull KR's defence was immense, but still, Warrington just didn't turn up, did they? No, they didn't I turn mean, a number of handling errors. Yeah, they didn't turn up, and I, I did pick Warrington at yeah. the start of the season. I did think... Uh, you know, it was about time they, they, they pulled the finger out and, and got their hands on the Super League title. But they started great, actually. The first five minutes, Warrington were on fire. I thought they're going to be uh, 30 nil here to, to, to the wire. But that wasn't the case. And, and you're right, OKR's defence was absolutely fantastic and thoroughly deserved the, the victory at the end of the day. And Warrington, extremely poor finish to uh, what's, what you got to say is, is another poor year as well. Well, let's talk about those two games in detail after we've seen the highlights. So out the pass, giving Leeming something to do, and Hardacre dealing with the dribbling kick from Leeming. Well, if you're a Warriors player and you fly out the line, you've got to make sure you get it right, like Leeds Rhinos. In Super League, Hastings, Hardacre chiming in, and Hardacre trying to get through Harry Newman, and Newman doing a good job to the extent that Hardacre flung the ball forward. On the back of some strong kicks here, and it is end for end this game. Hardacre under that kick from Raw. Oh. Leeming. One for Bibby to challenge for, and Myra was that came to it into the hands of Hanley. And Hanley will go over, and Hanley will dot the ball down. Huntington, it does. The referee says play on, and this could be the break Wigan needed. Cameron Smith is tangled up there, and Smith. And Partington tangling, Singleton steps in. Oh no. And Wigan, well, it's going to be a lot of uh, soul searching after this season. The kick from Marshall to Chase. And the ball is fired out, and Jordan Abdul, and Jordan Abdul gets over in the corner as he got that one down. The referee says yes. Supporters down below as Takarangi though plays the ball. Mikey Lewis, little chip kick over the top. He's taking on Radford. He's beating Radford. He's scoring the try. Here's Jez Litton. Litton fires the pass away. Mustafa again. That was a high shot from him. That was a high shot on Mustafa. Jordan Abdul then. Try. Two goals to his name already this evening. The M62. And the ball is back with Abdul. Abdul will go with the boot for one, will get it. And surely now Hulkingston Rovers are beyond reach. Yeah, those highlights do not do Hulk out justice. It was an immense defensive performance. But let's do the post-mortem first of all for Warrington and Wigan. Uh, starting with Wigan, we've just heard Bill Arthur saying we're going to have to do some soul-searching. What's gone wrong at Wigan this year? It's been, it's been a terribly poor season, has it, from Wigan? Certainly on, on attack. I mean, how many times have Wigan been nilled this year? Just the, well, the, Leeds have done it twice and they've never done it before until this season. Just, there's just a, a lack of creativity. You see there's a lack of confidence. But for me, it starts you know, with, with the pack as well. And, and for the Wigan pack, have not been dominant enough you know, to, to create opportunities for, for the guys outside. But you know, it's, it, they've gone out in games and, and they, they look clueless on attack. You know, I don't know whether they know what, what they're supposed to be doing out there. But it's, it certainly doesn't come over that way. I felt for Adrian Lamb this season, if you after the game as well. Obviously, they got to a grand final last year, no fans. You know, 
He's had a tough couple of years at Wigan, hasn't he? He has had a tough couple of years. You know, I think starting from from the off when he when he got the job, you know, there was all this is it Sean Edwards coming, or what have you. It was a bit of a funny situation, and then obviously, you know, Wigan had a, a great year last year. There was nothing in, you know, we were there. It, there was nothing in the in the grand final. It was a great performance from both sides, but they've just not carried that on or, or built on that this year. What have Wigan got to do? I mean, they've got some good youngsters. Well, they have, and that's what Wigan have had throughout the years, good youngsters. So, uh, you know, they've, they've been thrown in this year, so they've had the experience, so they'll be better for it next year. But I know they've made a couple of signings, a couple of Aussie signings, so they need to, to step up. But the big question mark for me is who's going to be the coach and, you know, what, what he can bring to the table. Because uh, I agree with Skull, it's uh, very unwigan like this, this uh, year. and. Some of the performances have been quite dire, really, and it's a club that expects success and, and demands success, and they've, they've not had it. And uh, you know, you, you can imagine a few Wigan supporters would be scratching their heads at the minute and just being a bit bewildered at what has gone on. But uh, yeah, they need, do need to make changes, but they need a bit of fresh blood, I think, and uh, maybe uh, bring Wayne back, and uh, you know that that could re reinvigorate the uh, the full club. <clears throat> Uh, we was in the studio last week, he didn't allude to it, but there is rumours about him being a director of rugby. Yeah, I think it'd be a, a masterstroke from Chris Rodlinski in the club, you know, uh, if he can combine the two roles, England coach and uh, director of rugby, I think uh, it'd be great for, for Wigan because he is Wigan. Know, he's Wigan through and through. He's Wigan through and through and, uh, you know, it's no surprise that the amount of success he had there and uh, everyone thinks the world of him at the club, uh, so I'm led to believe, so it won't be, uh, won't be, a, won't be a terrible... Um, appointment by any stretch, and uh, I think Wayne would, would love the uh, the thought of going back to the club as well. So uh, watch this space. So there's going to be a new coaching setup at Wigan. There's definitely one at Warrington. We know who it is Daryl Powell. Right then. So can you put your finger on what went wrong? I mean, some of the some of the errors. Some of the errors were and, awful. Well, it's just Wigan. Uh, sorry, Warrington have been that inconsistent this year. It's uh, it's been so frustrating because. They have had one of them, if not the best squad, not just this year, but over the last four or five years. And to have one sole Challenge Cup to their name, you know, with a the squad they've had is uh, not acceptable, really. And that, that final last week was, was just the uh, typified what they've been like all year. You know, first five minutes, fantastic. And then again, inconsistent, dropping balls and whatnot. Now, a lot of pressure has been put on Daryl Powell and, and quite rightly so, you know, theoretically, he's got the best out of... Uh, a very limited squad at Castleford, you know, with all the, uh, the star players there and, um, you know, all, all the money Sam and Rand spent. On paper, it, it works very well, but uh, there's a bit of pressure on Daryl, but I'm sure he'll, he'll enjoy that pressure. And, uh, and as I say every year, it's a standing joke, it's Warrington's year, but they should have definitely won the, 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 the Super League at least a couple of times over the last, you know, 10, 10 years or so. Um, Daryl Powell is coming into a well run club. But again, just a team that's, that's frozen in a big game, haven't they? Yeah, I, I think the, the responsibility stands with the players and, and some big name players on big money. Um, there's only them that can go out and do it. You know, they're the ones that have got to deliver. You know, you see it one week, you know, they're outstanding and then the week they're not. The only difference there can be the players' mentality. You know, they've got the ability to do it. It's why they paid the big, the big bucks for doing it. And you do feel sorry for the likes of Steve Price, you know, when coaches... Once they cross that whitewash, they have no control of what them players deliver. And, and for me, there's got to be responsibility on them, on them players or, you know, they shouldn't be at a club like Warrington. And one of your mates, Lee Briars, what a job he's done there. Yeah, he's, he's been outstanding, has he? You know, just from, from his term as, as obviously as a, as a player, I think 25 years he's, he's done at Warrington. Um, yeah, he, he, you know, Lee's a very good friend of mine and great knowledge, you know, obviously outstanding player, but a very, very knowledgeable coach as well. And he'll be a big loss to Warrington. Yeah, I echo what Scully said. He's been a fantastic servant to the Warrington club and he holds the record for the most points scored, the most goals kicked and uh, actually played in the game when he, he broke, I think he broke the most points in the game, uh, most conversions in the game and actually took the all-time uh, point scoring uh, record against Swinton. We, I think we beat him by 90-odd. Zero, but uh, it was a great, great game to uh, notch up a few records. But been fantastic as a player, and uh, it, you know, by all accounts, he's been great as a coach as well. So he'll be sorely missed. Uh, been a great servant, as I've just said, and uh, yeah, wherever he goes, I'm sure he'll make a success of it because, as Scully just said, he's got a great rugby league brain, and uh, I'm sure another club can can use his uh, his nouns. 
Whole KL fans are probably watching this right now saying, well, come on, it wasn't just Warrington disappointing, give us some credit. Their defence was immense. It was immense. Fr- that was one of the best defensive performances I've seen in a long, long time. Yeah, it was immense. To you nil know, Warrington at home as well. And, and the effort, the effort on, on some of the scramble in defence that, you know, they, they managed to stop what looked like certain tries for, for Warrington. Um, I've thoroughly enjoyed watching Old KL this year. I think they've been a, a revelation and, and really pleased to see them make the, the top six. And then to go on and... You know, I think a, a lot of teams, certainly on attack, you know, Wigan and Leeds are two of them, um, who I think can take a lot. You know, looking at, at the way Hull KR play, the way they move the ball, the way they move teams around and, and play with a bit of expansion. Um, you know, it starts Jez Litton, you know, Jordan Abdul, Mikey Lewis. I think they've been outstanding. You know, young, ex- inexperienced, you know, fully confident kids who just go out and play, play what's in front of them. And I think they've, they've been outstanding. Certain times it's not worked and, and sometimes, you know, we, we've had to say, OK, I need to, to rein it in a bit. But they're playing how they think they can have success, not trying yeah. to outplay somebody else at, the, at, the, at their game. I was there on Friday night. Jordan Abdul bossed that game, shouting at everybody. Yeah, he did. He's, uh, he's a smart footballer, isn't he? You know, you see it all the way through the game. You know, he's, he scored the first try, you know, kicking, kicking drop goals, kicking goals. He's got the full... He's got the full repertoire, hasn't he, of, of skills. Um, and I think he's, he's been outstanding. He's, he's led Hulkar this year. And I think we were sat in here about March time when Mikey Lewis was scoring a try for York and you were saying oh, you were surprised. You'd let him go on loan. Yeah, I mean, obviously on loan, if, he, if he's not going to be playing, he's better off at York where, he, where he's playing rather than, you know, we, we know that the issue with, with no reserve grade. So he's, he's better playing somewhere else than, than not playing. Say it's worked, isn't it? You know, it has worked for him. It's giving him game time, you know, and I think other, other clubs and, and players can, can take note of that. Um, but he's always, you know, I remember watching Mikey through the, through the academy and he's, he's one of them, what you expect of a scrum half, a Sean Longer Libre is, you know, cocky little, you know, excited talented kid you know he's not shy in, in putting himself about and uh, I think he's been outstanding and as he grows into that that leading role now as, a, as their number seven full care I think he's uh, he's only going to get better they had nine senior players missing on Friday night did whole care and I don't think many of them will be back on Thursday night to go to the Catalans um Catalans are fours on to win that game Hull care are three to one but we're nine to two at Warrington were Hull care Look, everyone's expecting Catalans to win on Thursday night. Can we get another upset? Yes, without a doubt. I mean, Tony Smith, is, is, I love watching Tony Smith. Uh, you know, obviously, I rate him as a coach, rate him as a, a, as a guy. And uh, he said, look, every game we've gone into this year, we've been underdogs. You know, no one's really given us a chance, certainly in these uh, playoff series. So it'll be, it'll be the same uh, against the Catalans at the weekend. It'll be tough for the travel. All the players missing who you mentioned just then, but they're going to go there and they're going to give it the best shot. So, uh, yeah, there will be underdogs, but there's no reason why they can't go over there and, and, and get a result. It's going to be very, very tough, but they're playing with confidence and rugby league's all about confidence and momentum. And, uh, you know, that will give them a lot of confidence to nil. Warrington at home, you know, a star-studded team. They're going to go over there and think, you know, we're going to just throw our, all our eggs in this basket. And regardless of the result of the, of the weekend, I think we should give Tony Smith a lot of credit to take him from... Bottom and, of the table and Danny Maguire as well. Danny Maguire as well, yeah, his assistant. To take him from bottom of the table last year to one game off the grand final or potentially the grand final or potentially winners, who knows? You know, it's been an absolutely brilliant year for, from Hull KR. I just thought it was that sort of band of brothers performance about them on Friday night and I just said to someone, you never know, they could do it at Catalan. Yeah, that's the great thing with, with this game, isn't it? And certainly in the, in the playoffs and when you come to the business end of the season... It does, it does go up a notch, so, you know, some teams can't handle that intensity and Hull KR, they, you know, there's no pressure on them, you know, they, they weren't expected to, to get to where they've got to so far, so, you know, nobody expects them to win, but they will. I've no doubt they'll go into that game with, with full of confidence to, to go and, you know, build on the back of that, that great win last week. Well, let's turn our attention to the Catalans. They've won the League Leader Shield for the first time, let's say, from their coach, Steve McNamara. No, they're a good team. They deserve to be where they're at. It's not by accident where they're at. They've worked extremely hard, quite clearly. And to go to Warrington and win 19-0 is a tremendous result. So uh, we've had three fantastic tussles against them so far this season. We expect another one um, on Thursday night. Yeah, it, it's a reward for everybody involved at the club. Uh, without doubt, you know, it is. Um, 
and Bernard, you know, the rest of the directors, our supporters, the players, everybody else. Like I said, we, we've earned the right um, to be at home in this game. And, you know, look, the Champions Cup games where we got drawn at home, we had to play away. And we understood that. You know, we didn't particularly agree with it, but we understood the circumstances. But now, um, to get a game of this magnitude, to, to fight so hard throughout the season, I think the consistency, particularly over the last two, two seasons, has been there for us. But to earn the right to play this game at home um, is great, you know, and uh, it will be a special occasion here on Thursday. It certainly will be a special occasion. It'll be a bouncing crowd as well. What a job he's done. Million pound game, winning the Challenge Cup, League Leader Shield. What a job he has done. He has. He's done a great job, hasn't he, Steve? He's, he's built a, a real strong squad. And, and obviously, you know, they, they found that consistency at last. Um, they've got some stars in that team. And, you know, Sam Tompkins being, being yep, one of them. back in big, training. So. A, big, a big question mark on, on whether Sam will play. I uh, think I he'll think play. So. I think he'll play. I think we <laughs> will play. Um, and he's, he's massive for, for Catalan, you know, and that spine of the team, you know, along with, with Drinkwater, Maloney and, and McAlorum. Um, I just think, you know, they, they fully deserve the, the league leader's shield. And how good is it going to be to see a, a full Brutus stadium? You know, I believe tickets were, were flying out the door, you know, day one and, and pretty much sold out. So... It's going to be a, it's going to be a hostile crowd for for LKR. That'll be a, a challenge for them. Obviously, you know the, the trip to France and then a, a very very parochial crowd. Um, it should be a great occasion. How good has James Maloney been this season? Absolutely fantastic. You know, for for a for a team to do well, you need a you know strong uh, half back, and uh, he, he's been absolutely outstanding. But I just want to mention what what Scully said then for Steve McNamara to do what he's done with the team. I think it's great for the sport. You know, for other people, knockers of, of Catalans coming into the competition a few years ago, they've been in a massive, massive, huge positive addition to, to the Super League. To have won the, the, the Challenge Cup league leaders, there's only one off missing off the resume now, and that's the grand final. But they are a glamour club of, of the Super League, and I'm delighted to, to have seen what they've done this year. But, uh, but yeah, yeah, James Maloney and Sam Tompkins, they, they have got star players, but they're, they're also playing really well as a team. and. Um, and Scully mentioned the consistency, you know, there was always extremely good at home, very, very tough to be at home, but they've got that form away from home now as well. So it's going to be tough uh, for, for whole KR, but, you know, we mentioned that they're just going to uh, put, throw, throw all the uh, eggs in the basket and uh, see, what, see what happens. Right, before I get your predictions, and obviously it was a two outsiders that won last week, a 14-1 to 1 double, uh, Leeds and whole KR. Uh, let's get more from the whole KR camp. And hear from Chris from the Red Robin podcast. Chris, I spoke to you last week and you said there was hope of going to Warrington and getting a result. There was a bit more than hope. Okay, I went to Warrington and nilled them. Yeah, what an amazing result and, and an amazing performance. You know, a number of players really, really took the challenge to Warrington on the night. And we expected Warrington to come into the game and, and probably show a bit more than what they did, but I think Rose did a really good job in nullifying the threat that Warrington posed, and and we saw that in the the enthusiasm to defend, uh, some you know the creativity in attack, and for me it was a really complete eighty minutes performance. So I wasn't expecting it. Like I said, we was going in hope that Rose might you know might put in a good performance, we might run Warrington close, but in the end to get that result was was absolutely unbelievable and. And the, the feeling on the terraces was comfortable, you know, every, everyone was just absolutely buzzing for that result. And, and you know, hopefully we go to Catalan and, it, you know, it might be the same again. Well, Catalan's Dragons stand in between Hull KR and Old Trafford. It will be a tough ask as in the south of France as well, of course. But I tell you what, that Rovers team won't be short of any confidence, will it? No, and we, we've already played them three times this season. And I think there's only been 10 points difference in, in, in all of them three games. So it, it's... It's really teed up for a fantastic occasion, and you know Rovers don't fear anyone. That we've seen, we've shown that. Uh, you know when we played Warrington uh, last week, we've shown that against Wigan. We, we really don't fear uh, fear any team, and I think Rovers will go into that game full of confidence, knowing that they're only eighty minutes away from from Old Trafford. Um, you know the pressure's on Catalan really. They've had the sold out signs up for for a long time. There's a a lot of anticipation around the Catalan Dragons. So Rovers go over there knowing that if they put a performance in and they back each other like they did against Warrington, that they've got a, a great chance of getting the victory. And I'm sure it's going to be an entertaining game because the, the previous three occasions we've played each other has been has been real humdingers. So it's setting itself up for a fantastic night on Thursday. So go on, give me a prediction for Thursday night. Can you do it? Uh, well, 
I don't, I don't, I don't expect us to nil Catalan like we did the Wellington Wolves. I, don't, I think Catalan will be definitely be good for a few points. So it'll come down to whether we can outscore them. No, you know, no matter how good our defence is, whether we can outscore them. And I'm going to go for a, a drop goal victory uh, in Golden Point. <laughs> right then, your prediction was. <laughs> I just think Catalans could be one step too far for, for Hull I, just, I thought that about Warrington. For yeah, well, I think just with the uh, the travel and, you yeah. know, it was a bruising game, even though they Come weren't on then. quite convinced. I think Catalans uh, will will, uh, will beat Hull I think it's a, it's a big one for Hull to travel over there and get up to, to, to the level that they, they got to last week. You know, this week it would have, have been immense for them on the, on the back of that big win. Uh, can they do it again? I'm going to go for a Catalan win. Right, let's talk about the other semi-final. Let's start with your old club, Leeds. Nil in Wigan for twice this season. Um, people coming back as well into the squad. I think this will be a closer semi than the, than the other one, to be fair. Just with the way Saints have carried themselves over the last couple of years, you know, they're used to playing in these games, used to making the grand final. Well, they've won the last two, haven't they? Well, I mean, the, last the, year's was the, the fantastic. Have, and I, I think it's going to be a really close affair. You, you just mentioned that. Confidence boosting win last week. Boris coming back. And, you know, Leeds, let's not forget there, uh, up until a couple of years ago, one of the powerhouses and you know, making these major finals. But I just think um, Saints have just have a, have a bit too much for, for Leeds. That's pointless asking you, but anyway. <laughs> I disagree with Moz though. I think I think I think this could be a one sided affair. I was at the uh, I was at the, the, the Saints Leeds game. I know it's a semi final and, and it, they are a completely different mentality. Leeds were poor in that last game against Saints. Well, Leeds, Leeds were terribly poor and I don't think they were that good against Wigan. They defended well. Richie Agar has mentioned about the you know the, their effort and the resilience on defence. You know, they scored a try off a, off a crossfield kick. They're struggling to score points. Now, we know that we've had, they've had a lot of disruption with, with the halves. Obviously, Luke Gale's missed a lot of the season through injury. Rob Louie has. Uh, you've got Cruz Lehman, who's an out-and-out out nine, playing at half-back. That lack of creativity maybe could affect them scoring points against a, a good defence like St. Helens. Whereas Saints, they've, they've had a week off. They're fresh. They've got a, pretty much a full squad. And we know they can score points. Is a week off. A big advantage. I think at this time of the year, I think after the, the two seasons we've had with over over COVID with back to back games, I don't think you don't lose anything in regards to momentum for, for one week after the season that you've had. I think if anything, it, it freshens the legs and I think it'll be a it'll be a well And being well at home's game. another big advantage. Yeah, and for St Helens, isn't it? Yeah. I mean obviously it's it's always it's always different playing at home and you know, it could be a different game if it if it was at Headingley in front of the South Stand and you know, all the all the Leeds fans but you know, I'm sure Leeds won't forget what they they got put you know against us against the sword on two weeks ago at uh, Totally Wicked. So I think it could be a, could be a, a tough night for Leeds. Well, St Helens are going for three grand finals on the bounce. Let's get the view from the terraces and hear from the lads from the Red V Net. You've got a big game against Leeds on Friday, but you must be pretty confident going into it. Kevin, this kind of feels like this is what St Helens do now. They play in semi-finals, they win them, and then they play in grand finals. Yeah, past couple of years, that's that's definitely been the case. And you're right that, that we should be confident going into it. Although Leeds have had a little bit of a hex over us um, in the playoffs over the past couple of years. I don't think we've, we've won one against them for a while to, to finish their season off. Um, but after beating them 40 points to six uh, a couple of weeks ago, if we turn up with the same effort and attitude in this game, then having it at the totally wicked, we should be confident. Obviously, Leeds, I, they come into this game as underdogs based on the fact that you know they've been quite inconsistent this season. But I... There's just something about Leeds finishing fifth in Super League, which I think makes us all a little bit, just pay attention a little bit more because we've been here before, haven't we? We've, we've seen this happen. And, you know, the, if there's probably any club that are going to do it from fifth, it will be Leeds. I think Definitely. we saw the romance in that. Um, it, 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 fits the, it fits the fairy tale, doesn't it? Um, especially with everything that's been going on this season. I think Leeds have actually beat us six out of eight times when we've met in the playoffs and, and, and grand finals, obviously we had that big losing run against them at Old Trafford. Um, on paper, 
Saints should win this game. But that isn't always the case, how big games go. We only have to see how Leeds and Hull KR performed last week in, in upsetting the form book. Um, and we've been upset a couple of times at home this season ourselves against the likes of Castleford. Uh, so we'll be wanting to make sure that doesn't happen this week. All right, gents, before I let you go, Kevin, I'm going to come to you first. I want a, I want a prediction, I want a, a result and a margin and a first try scorer from you. Uh, result and margin, right, we'll go because I think it's going to rain on Friday, so I'll go quite low scoring. Um, I'll go 20 points to four. First try scorer, Regan Grace. I'm assuming that's St Helens, 20 to four. That's to St Helens, yes. Dave? Now, anybody who knows me knows I don't like to be too confident, so I'm going to go St Helens, 38, leads six. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and I'm going to go, I don't even know if he's going to be playing. See on Matauti, a first try scorer, because I've done him all year. And the only time that he's actually come in is the one occasion where I didn't put it on. Uh, cheers to uh, Dave and Kevin. Right, Moz, prediction for St. Ellen's Leeds. Uh, I think I'm going to disagree with Scully. I think it'll be a lot closer. Um, you know, Leeds are going to go there and just throw caution to the wind last game of the season, uh, or potentially... But I think uh, Saints win. I think it'll be 20 points to 16. Oh, I think Kev's been reading my column. <laughs> I, uh, I picked a 16, 16 point win for, for Saints. I just think they've, they've got too much. I think the, the backfield, you know, Coot, Grace, and, and Makinson, just get them on that front foot, you know, giving the likes of, of Wormsley. And then, you know, we look at the strike players that they've got. And I think Leeds have got to be able to, to score points, which I think they're struggling at the moment. It's also the playoffs in the championship. It's Toulouse versus Batley Bulldogs, Featherstone versus the Halifax Panthers. Good luck to all of those. That'll be the million pound game the day after the grand final. Uh, we've got a League One semi final. This is to play Workington. It's Keithley versus Doncaster. Good luck to those. We know the grand finalists in the women's game as well. Uh, Leeds beat York 22 18. And St. Helens put a convincing win over Castleford, winning 58 0. Bet's here from their skipper, Jody Cunningham. Jody, firstly, congratulations on a fantastic win for you and your St. Helens teammates at the weekend against Castleford. And you are 18 minutes away from lifting the Betfred Women's Super League title and completing the treble. Yeah, uh, really good victory. I think the girls were outstanding yesterday, as they have been all season, but I really think we're building in momentum. You can see the improvement from sort of game one to where we're at now. And we did set ourselves a target of of doing the treble this year. You know, we didn't think that was out of reach. And I think what we've done this year has surpassed anything I expected. You know, we've blown teams away. You have so much quality. So, yeah, it's just 80 more minutes now just to put in the hard work, hopefully continue with that strong performance. And yeah, fingers crossed, it's a, it's a Saints treble. And obviously 2019 belonged to the Leeds Rhinos, which would have been frustrating for yourselves. We were all frustrated, of course, by the cancellation of the Women's Super League in 2020. But there's been a ruthlessness about St Helens this season. You've really put teams to the sword. You've really gone about your business in a very measured and controlled way. You must be really pleased and confident based on that going into this final. Yeah, you know, it, like you say, it was disappointing for everyone to, to lose out on that 2020 season. Saints, we got beaten two semifinals um, in 2019 and it was just last minute try. So it was really disappointing. We felt like we underachieved and we went into the 2020 season. We'd done all the pre-season and we felt ready. We felt like, you know, last year we were more than ready to lift some silverware. Um, and with the cancellation, we just made sure that we took advantage of the extra time we had. You know, we didn't take our foot off the pedal despite not playing any games last year, you know, we worked solidly on fitness and um, our defence. We worked loads on um, that core skill and ability, which I think has been evident this season is that we've really kicked on and utilised the time off that we had. So, yeah, to see the girls put out the performances they've had, not just the quality we've added to the squad, but the girls who've been there for years are playing the best rugby I've ever seen them play. And I think that's just as rewarding as sort of the new players we've added to the squad. They were absolutely shining as well and putting massive points on the board. And the final, St. Helens versus Leeds, live on Sky on Sunday the 10th, the day after the grand final. Scully, very quickly, just great the women's game getting all this profile. Yeah, it's fantastic, isn't it? It's a, it's a great product to, to watch and, you know, congratulations to, to Jodie and her, her Saints team. You know, she spoke there about the, the work that they've put in over, over the last uh, probably 18 months 
uh, certainly through this this tough, tough COVID period, and you know they've got some some big players, you know, with a lot of experience, like Emily Rudd, Jamie Hardcastle, girls like that, uh, and I think they've had a, an outstanding season. On Monday, the Steve Prescott MBE Man of Steel Award will be announced live on Sky. Here's the candidates. Jordan Ambrose fits the mould of what Tony Smith's after in a player. And they've got the licence to play with Abdul towards the corner. Right Hall! And right Hall wins the race! Would you believe it? Abdul, Abdul now with a chance to perhaps win it for Hawkinson Rovers. And there is the goal! A drop goal from Jordan Abdul. This is Jake Connor! And Connor's going to fight the line! Everyone knows he's a phenomenal player. He's a talent. And when he takes you on, he's going to burn you. Sneed now, Sneed, Connor quickly on, and Swift has a run in for a try for Hull FC. And what a perfect finish, perfect ball from Connor. Sneed hoists the kick, except it's Connor who claims it and provides it for Mahe Fanua. An amazing piece of skill from Jake Connor. You can't, you cannot keep him out of the action. Fifth tackle, short ball, and he's over the line, he's Lomax. Lomax, and in goes Sir Percival for another St Helens try. It's been coming for a while. And again, that crisp St Helens handling, just leaving Hull FC clutching at shadows. Well, he's a dual threat. He's, he's a great ball player, but he's also a great runner, so he's, 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 he's tough for defences to work out what he's going to do. And can Sam Tompkins engineer an opening? Tompkins weaving his way through, looking to get to the line. He's over, he gets the pass away, and they do, do get the first try of the game, and Matt Whitley was right there. Brilliant kick from Josh Drinkwater. Gets its reward in the shape of a try for Sam Tompkins. On by Drinkwater, and Tompkins a little step, another step from Tompkins, and Tompkins, magnificent! Magnifique! from Sam Tompkins under the noses of the Saints supporters. Widdop, King now, and Toby King accelerates away. Support left and right, he's gonna go inside to Widdop. Fantastic try again from the Warrington Wolves. Widdop over the top. It's a spectacular finish in the corner. Widdop, Widdop breaking up the middle, aiming for underneath the post, gets his second try of the game. Patrick last time out, two tries tonight for Gareth Widdop. So the winner will be announced on Monday night. Good luck to all five candidates. Who would you pick then? Well, I think uh, obviously you know five five worthy candidates and uh, some more consistent than, than others. Uh, but for me, I think we'll we'll see the guy. Hopefully, see the guy out there on uh, on Thursday night. Uh, for me, there's there's only one winner there. It's Sam Tompkins. Yeah, I agree, Sam. And if he does get his hands on the trophy, I think it's fantastic that he's uh, he has won it before. He's a two-time winner, like my friend over here, and you know. To win it 10 years apart shows a great level of consistency and dedication and if he does get his hands on it, well done to Sam and I think he's had a fantastic year and it would be no surprise that Catalan's won league leader shields on the back of his performances so it'll top a, a great year for the, for the club and for Sam himself. He did two years on the bounce, the only man to do it, I'm surprised he didn't mention it. <laughs> right, sum up. Two cracking semi-finals, I think we've got. Two cracking semi-finals. You know, I've picked my predictions, I think Saints and Catalan's but it's, it's certainly not a foregone conclusion. OK, are going to go over there with confidence. They're going to just uh, throw everything out of the game. Nothing to lose. Uh, and Leeds, you know, they've got a few players back. Big game players, Leeds. And again, they're going to go over there. Not as favourites, underdogs. Nothing to lose. Last game of the season. Huge, uh, you know, grand final at stake. I still think them two guys, but it's going to be two fantastic semis, I can see it. You can have the last word. Yeah, I'm, I'm really, really looking forward to these two games. I think they're two exciting games. And it's do or die rugby, isn't it? You only get one opportunity. Um, I think Saints and Catalans are the, are the favourites and, and favourites for, for a reason but it's, uh, it's far from a done deal but they're my two predictions saints Catalan final uh, Cheers fellas thanks for coming in good luck to the uh, teams in the Championship playoffs and the League One playoff and the uh, Championship and League One and uh, Betfred Women's Awards will be on our league app on Wednesday night right enjoy it it's getting exciting this time next week we will know the two finalists for Betfred Grand final at Old Trafford.